Hey, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome here to chase race number three of season seven of the Answer A Oreo Truck Series. Here today, we are here at the track that most people end up putting as a season finale track at, in uh, Energy 2003 series and so on, but this ends up not being our season finale. It ends up being one of our races in the chase, though. Homestead Miami Speedway. Now, in NASCAR, whether it be the Camping World Truck Series, the Nationwide Series, or the Sprint Cup Series, Homestead Miami is always the place where the champion is crowned, but we got ourselves a one-two punch to finish out the season, but we still put Homestead in the schedule, and we're getting ready here today for the Ford Weekend, as this is going to be the Ford 200, tomorrow the Ford 300, and then of course the Ford 400 for the Snickers Cup Series event. But, getting ready here with rather an unusual start to the chase, I might say. I don't recall very often something like this taking place, where the point standings, Three races into the chase, all of a sudden they're completely split apart by huge gaps. Usually, the points seem to be even closer than ever at the beginning part of this chase when drivers are trying to be up front, trying to get wins, trying to get those extra five bonus points, and trying to keep themselves up in contention for the championship. That's not the case coming into today's race, and we're going to be following that storyline during the course of this 27-lap event. On point is going to be Chaser Kyle Thomas. He has had a tough start to the chase. I believe he has finished no better than 35th so far this this uh, chase, both at Atlanta and Watkins Glen. He comes in 12th in the point stands out of the 13 chasers, and he only has 9 points he has gained this chase. He has a total right now of 78 points out of the top position. Maybe a win today could get him back in the running because... You know, we still have, after this one, seven more chase races. The strange thing is, every single driver, first through 13th in points in the chase, they still are mathematically eligible to get up there and battle for the championship. Kyle Thomas could turn around his luck here today. Maybe, with a couple of good runs, maybe a win today. He could be back up in contention. Dylan Poteet lost the second position in points to Levi McIntyre last week at the Glen. He comes into this race third in the standings. He starts on the outside of the front row. He's a former winner this season, but here's the interesting thing. Due to the bad luck that he had last week, well, it wasn't really bad luck, but he had a bad qualifying position, so he didn't finish terribly well. But he comes into this race 31 points out of the top position in the point standings. They got James Silverfox lined up in third. Another chaser and Zach Campbell lines up fourth. He is 11th in the chase standings, right now a total of 59 points out of the top position, and the completing the top five is William Duncan. The guy that is dominating the points right now is actually going to be rolling off from yet another good qualifying position this week. He'll start off in the ninth position, that is Jacob Lawler in the 09 Home Depot Toyota, Can or Toyota Tundra out of Joe Gibbs Racing. He comes in with a 30-point advantage over second place Levi McIntyre after he was one of just two drivers last week to place a top five or top ten finish in the uh, in the running order for the finish of the Watkins Glen race. The only other driver that did it with him, actually starting alongside of him, Kyle Corbett, he'll start this race in tenth place. Corbett comes in its race fifth in chase points, a total of thirty seven points out of the top position. I'm also forgetting Kyle Matthews finished in finished in the top ten in that event too, but uh, he's not starting up here near the front. But it's time to get these cars rolling off though. We're going to switch here to Kyle Thomas. And we're going to get these trucks rolling off. We'll show you the starting lineup on the top of your screen. The chasers are highlighted in yellow in that grid. And let's lay out the points coming into this race for you guys. Jacob Lawler is the points leader. 30 points over second in points, Levi McIntyre. Dylan Pote third in points. He is 31 points out. Kyle Matthews and Kyle Corbett are both tied for fourth place. They are both 37 points back. Deanna Shelton is sixth in the points, 40 points out of the top position. Gene Sanford is seventh. She's a total of 52 points out. Jake Cole is 57 points out as he is 8th in points. Austin LaPlante and Isaac Canepa, they're tied for 9th in the standings as they are both a total of 59 points out of the top position. Uh, Zach Campbell, he is 69 points out as he is 11th in points. Kyle Thomas, he's 12th in the standings as we mentioned, 78 points out. And Tanner Sullivan is actually dead last in the championship points right now. He is a total of 79 points out of the points lead. So, Tanner Sullivan, Kyle Thomas, Zach Campbell, those guys, the pressure is on them. They gotta get good runs here or else they may next week end up being mathematically eliminated from the championship competition. 
As here we go, getting ready to turn them loose. Pace truck peels off onto pit road. 27 laps of racing here at Homestead Miami Speedway. Who's going to be able to go to victory lane? We're going to find out here as the Ford 200 is green. James Silverfox got himself one really good jump there right to the inside left rear of the 16 machine. Apparently he didn't feel comfortable stepping out of line though. Now he's already hounding him. Oh, he's going to move him. He's trying to move him and he has moved him. The Ford truck goes to the lead. Silver Fox to the point. Oh, there goes Jimmy Bly around. Jimmy Bly has spun it down to the infield grass. Looked like maybe Danny Wells was behind him. It was a black car and I couldn't tell which one it was. Four wide for second coming here as there's no caution flag. Oh, careful guys, careful. Galligan, Duncan, Thomas. There's the points leader Lawler right in this hornet's nest. I don't think I'd want to be the points leader right now with where he's running. Oh, Kyle Thomas all the way up the track. Caution flags out. Oh, Duncan bounces off of Poteet. Keep it together. Four wide. Burton, Lamas, Poteet. Poteet's going to get turned around. But I think everybody avoided him. He's going to spin to the infield grass. Kanepa. He also has spun. Another chaser. Corbett is, is held up. I don't know what happened to him. DeFalo's on pit road. As James Silverfox will lead him down to our first caution of the day here on lap number two. Leo Walker second. Galligan in third. Duncan fourth. And I believe Joshua Michaels, our winner last week at the Glen, just barely edged out Jacob Lawler for fifth. Now DeFalo's on pit road. Oh, Kyle Corbett. What a top 10 run last week at Watkins Glen. Fifth in the points right now in the chase. He is smoking. Jamie DeFalo currently on pit road. And that may be all she wrote for Kyle Corbett. Yes. Oh, wait a minute. No, he is going to try and continue. Can they get engine damage repaired on that truck? I don't know. There's Jimmy Bly. We saw him get turned around back on lap one, but they didn't throw the caution. Poteet's back here. McIntyre back here. That's second and third in the chase points right there. And here comes Isaac Kanepa. He's come... Oh, that's not Isaac Kanepa. I thought that was Kanepa. That's Brad Smith. Oh, Jake Cole! Eighth the championship points. A lot of front-end damage on his target, Toyota. Kyle Matthews. He's got damage. So is Zach Campbell. Where's Kanepa? Did Kanepa... Oh, there he is. Quite a bit of front-end damage on his machine as well. Making his first chase, 10th in championship points. And he may be out of this event. And he is indeed. Wow, that's a tough break there for Isaac Canepa. Man. But James Silverfox is the leader under the yellow. We got to document everything that happened here. We'll start first with the incident involving Jimmy Bly on lap one. Then we'll take a look to see what the caution actually came out for on lap number two here at Homestead Miami Speedway. And here's a look at what happened to Jimmy Bly. They were basically four wide coming out of two. The initial contact, I believe, is going to happen right there. Gene Sanfer moves up to give uh, McLeod some room and ends up getting into the three of Jimmy Bly. Gene Sanford in a Bass Pro Shop sandwich there, and Jimmy just gets turned into the inside safer barrier there. And since it was close to the rear of the field, and it was just a single car incident, they did not throw a yellow flag. But the fortunate thing for Jimmy was that a yellow flag did come out, which kept him on the lead lap. But Jimmy Bly, the last, when we took the green flag, he was in the 12th position, and he lost a ton of spots, apparently after that happens. So let's take a look now and see what happened to actually put us out of the caution. I think it all started with Dylan Poteet. Well, I just saw when we uh, started recording here, somebody got together back behind this. I believe it was DeFalo and Campbell. We will have to look back at a replay of that. That actually was what brought the caution out. This was a wreck that happened just afterwards. Four wide here with Duncan, Poteet, Cody Lamas, Eric Burton. Burton kind of comes up into Cody. Cody up into Poteet and Poteet's not able to keep it straight, and his truck's going to spin around. Now, we're also going to have to look back and see what happened to Isaac Kanepa, because apparently his truck came spinning down into the infield grass as well. There you see Campbell going by, the 24. I know he got a piece of whatever happened with DeFalu back there in the uh, exit of turn two. As a matter of fact, it looks like, uh, yeah, there's, there's Kanepa spinning. Let's actually look back here and see what happened to DeFalo because I think that may end up 
maybe spelling out what happened to Canepa. This was behind the Dylan Poteet incident, just before it actually happened, and Odefelu got loose through that corner. He slid up. He gets up into Campbell. Campbell then turns him up right into Kyle Corbett. Corbett had nowhere to go, and the pole sitter, Kyle Thomas, almost got collected in this. And the 78 of DeFalo is actually going to go up and on his lid and on his roof. Riding the outside safer barrier there through that corner. Whoa! Deanna Shelton full speed through there. She gets through. Now let's find Kanepa and see how he got turned around. Oh, he's going to just going to get a little bit of help there from fellow rookie Luis Hernandez. That wasn't really a case of drivers bunching up with each other. The 88 just... Hooks the 14 in the left rear, turns him around. Canepa going to back it with the right rear into the safer barrier, and then he's going to almost make contact with Dylan Poteet as his truck continues to slide through the infield grass. We almost had two spinners end up meeting in the exact same spot. Look right there. Wow. That was close. They nearly made some contact. And look right there. There's the heartbreak. Kyle Corbett, he had absolutely nowhere to go in that incident. He was just a, a victim of circumstances. And uh, they're telling me that the reason Jake Cole and Isaac Kanepa have damage is apparently the two of them backed up into each other, I guess, or something. Under the pace lap. Oh, trying to find Jake Cole, not Eric Burton. There's Jake. Unless another incident happened that we don't know about. Oh, there was another incident. Never mind. This one, I think, starts with the 62 of Kyle Matthews. It indeed it does, right here. They're going to be three wide coming off of four. Contact there as Matthews runs into the back of Burton. That shoots him up. Chris Washer is there. 62 is going to get spun around, and then everybody's going to start scattering to avoid. Wow, Trent Dunham, nice avoidance. Brad Smith, though, he gets collected. That's why he had to come to pit road. And, oh, Matthew Daly to Marco Jake Cole. Oh, man. And apparently this is what's going to give Kanepa a whole lot of his damage. Let's see. All these drivers, I think, got through it. Here's Kanepa, full speed ahead, and who's he going to nail? Probably the 55. Nope, 87, right there. Right into the back of Chris Washer. As Washer and Kyle Matthews were trying to drive away. So I thought maybe they had backed up into each other. Bound the back straightaway under pace laps. Because we've seen that happen before. But apparently not. We had a wreck take place just exiting two. A spin take place in the middle of the back straightaway. And then a pile up coming out of turn number four. And the lucky son of a gun there is going to be Jimmy Bly. That three truck. As he's going to pick up a lot of valuable positions there when he could have very well gone a lap down after that caution flag did not come out for his spin. But a couple of chasers here involved in this one. The ones that are going to take the hard hits here today look like they may be Jake Cole, Isaac Canepa, as well as Kyle Corbett. Maybe Kyle Matthews as well because he got quite a bit of damage out of that incident out of four. But caution flag's out. Let's head back now to green. Green flag's going to come back out on lap seven of 27. James Silverfox leading the way here. I'm trying to remember when the last time was that James Silverfox had a Truck Series win, and it has been a long time. I think it has. I think it's been since uh, season four. It's been a long, long time since he's been to Victory Lane, a Truck Series event. Right now, he's looking pretty strong, but he's got Leia Walker right behind him, Sean Galligan there in third, fourth William Duncan, Joshua Michaels, two-time winner this season. His last win coming last week at Watkins Glen. He's up to fifth. Points leader Jacob Lawler. He's in sixth. The pole sitter Kyle Thomas is 7th, Cody Lamas in 8th, Zach Rogers in ninth, and 10th place right now is Dylan Young. Let's find the rest of our chasers here. Whoops, I just missed one. Austin LaPlante, he's currently in 12th. Deanna Shelton's up to 19th now. Kyle Matthews will restart 22nd with Zach Campbell in 23rd. Tanner Sullivan is in 26th. Gene Samper, 31st. Levi McIntyre, 35th, with Dylan Poteet in 36th position. All the rest of the chasers are out of the race. Jake Cole, 38th, Isaac Canepa, 40th, and 41st, Kyle Corbett, joining Brad Smith and Jamie DeFalu back in the garage area. So it's going to be a hard hit in the standings for those drivers. 
as the green flag is back out here at Homestead Miami. Now as far as the, uh, the chasers there, Jake Cole, he was eighth in points, Isaac Kanepa tenth in points. They were kind of down in the bottom, bottom six or so. One that's really gonna hurt is Kyle Corbett. He came in tied for fourth in the point standings and he was only 37 points out of the top position. He also had a rather good qualifying spot of 10th position here today. So that's really gonna hurt him hard in the point standings heading into next week at Lime Rock. So are Bucks with the lead. Galligan has been able to get around Leia Walker now for second, battles on for third as Leia Walker continues to lose ground. A couple of Ford F-Series, actually three Ford F-Series right here in this battle and the caution flags out again. Caution's waving for the second time here today. That did not take long at all. Let's see who this one involved. Oh, it involved the points leader. You've got to be kidding me. Jacob Lawler apparently has gotten himself into some trouble. And he has got a lot of damage on the back of that Toyota Tundra. The old cliche, no one is safe, apparently applies today, and this could play out interestingly into the point standings as of right now. There you see Pote Team McIntyre, they're both back here now with Jacob Lawler. They may not gain ground on the 09 today, but they may not lose ground either because Lawler apparently is what the car came up for in the pole sitter, Kyle Thomas who was looking for a good run here today to get himself back into championship contention. He is involved as well, and you gotta think this incident occurred between both those two drivers, Lawler and Thomas, up inside the top 10. Let's take a look at what happened. Silver Fox continues to lead now under our second caution of the day. This was coming out of turn number four, and this was a battle at the time for the sixth position. Cody Lama's going to take and make a dive bomb move three wide, but he's not the one that causes the wreck. It was actually Jacob Lawler. Lawler kind of tried to diamond turn three and four, comes down in four, and he bumper grabbed the 16. So Lawler, who you would think would have been very cautious during this race due to the huge points lead he had over everybody else, that he would not be willing to risk stuff like that, but apparently he did, and it may cost him. And that's a tough break there for Kyle Thomas, who had absolutely nothing to do with that incident. That was all on Lawler's shoulders. And I don't think Kyle Thomas is going to be too happy with the 09. Look at that. His car wasn't even able to drive away from the incident. That was a hard, hard hit into the safer barrier there out of four for Kyle Thomas, who was just trying to get a good run here today to get himself back up in championship contention, and... Jacob Lawler just takes him out and may have taken himself out as well. As we're under the caution, once again, Chasers having difficulty again for the second week in a row. Well, I'll tell you guys, I have not seen a chase start off like this in a long, long time. It really has seemed more like the Chasers are the ones getting involved in wrecks than the non-Chasers are. And I don't know if it's a sense of urgency or the fact that they... Just, just are not willing to get consistent runs. They're more willing to go for the five bonus points for winning an event. I don't really know what the motivation is, but whatever it is, it's not seeming to work out. I mean, most of the chasers did fairly all right in the first chase race in Atlanta. Watkins Glen, though, as we documented, only three chasers finished inside the top ten. And not as much drivers DNF'd at Watkins Glen, but they just didn't really have good track position to be able to get up there and get a top ten finish. And now here today, though, it's seeming like we have had more chasers get involved in wrecks than we have non-chasers. Top 10 as we go back to green are Silver Fox, Galligan, Leia Walker, William Duncan, Joshua Michaels, then it's Lamas, Young, Rogers, Charles Jackson is now up in the top 10 in 9th, and Eric Burton is in 10th place. Green flag about to come back out. We have uh, one driver, at least in the garage area, of Kyle Thomas. Jacob Lawler, I don't know if he's on pit road or if he's retired. He's out of the race, too. The points leader of the championship chase standings is out. And you can basically add on to that, he took himself out. Man. How many chases we got in the garage area right now? One, two, three. We got five chasers in the garage area already. And we're not even halfway through this race. And out of those chasers, they came in 1st, 5th, 8th, 10th, and 12th in points. 
Wow. Right now, amazingly enough, too, the highest running chaser at the current moment is Austin the Plant as the caution flags out again. If it's another chaser, I'm going to hit the roof. Right now, Austin the Plant is the highest running chaser. He's in the 11th position. It's a big opportunity for him as I think we are racing it back to the line still. Silver Fox, this, these cautions have been his best friend. I don't think he's had a challenge for the lead all day long as they'll battle behind him for second. William Duncan and Leia Walker side by side, but not much going to come of that. Looks like a spin on the front straightaway this time is what puts us under the yellow flag. And let's see, is it going to be a chaser? Is it going to be a chaser? Let's see. Well, I don't know. I don't see anybody really damaged. It looks like maybe Andreas Allen has some damage. Could have been Chris Washer, though. Because Jimmy Bly is now ahead of him. Could have been Jackie Tang, though, too. But it doesn't look like it's a chaser. Yay! All right, so let's take a look back and see what happened to put us out of the caution for the third time here today at Homestead, Miami. And here's what happened. A big cluster of trucks coming off of four. Gene Sanford underneath McLeod, who's underneath Tashimi, who's underneath Campbell. Then you got another three-wide situation shaping up here with Levi McIntyre, Andreas Allen, and Chris Washer. And I almost think maybe it just will be the 87 getting hooked by the double zero here coming off of four. Right there, yep. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. 91 car turns the 20 as well. Nice save by Prunes Little John, though. And look at Levi McIntyre. That was almost right across his nose. He almost got some damage out of that. Look at Dylan Poteet and the throw. I was like, okay, I'll pick up a few spots here. Is he just drove right through there at full speed. And Chris Washer was able to hang on to it. He actually didn't even hit the wall, but apparently they decided to throw a yellow flag for it. Nonetheless, it was right in front of the flag stand, so not really sure why they decided to throw a yellow for that when they didn't throw a yellow for Jimmy Bly's spin back on lap one. But anyhow, that puts us under the caution flag here, and let's get ready to go back to green once again. Well, it's certainly a welcome change to have a solo car spin bring out the caution rather than a bunch of chasers getting involved in a multi-car wreck. But we are under the yellow ready to go back to green. There's actually going to be 10 laps to go when we hit the green flag this time. James Silverfox has dominated this race ever since getting to the front. He's the leader. Leia Walker second, William Duncan third, Zach Rogers fourth, Joshua Michelson fifth, and Cody Lamas. Bob Jones, Dylan Young, Sean Gallagher slipped back under that run. He's back to ninth now, and Austin the Plant is now in the 10th position. Let's give you a full field rundown if we can. Trent Dunham's 11th, Matthew Daly 12th, Danny Wells 13th, 14th Chris Dollerton, Charles Jackson 15th, Eric Burton is 16th, 17th Deanna Shelton, Alex DeMarco is 18th, Kyle Matthews is 19th, and in 20th is Luis Hernandez. You got Tanner Sullivan 21st, Harrison Lang for 22nd, Sam McMillan 23rd, 24th is Jake Rogers, Prudence Little John is in 25th after her save there on the front straightaway. Gene Sanford 26th, James McLeod 27th, 28th Harhe Tashimi, then you got Zach Campbell in 29th, and Levi McIntyre is 30th. 31st, Andreas Allen, Dylan Pote, 32nd, Jackie Tang, 33rd, Jimmy Bly, 34th, and 35th is Chris Washer. If you're just joining us, we've got a number of chasers out of the race already, including the points leader coming in this race, Jacob Lawler, Kyle Thomas, Jake Colt, Isaac Canepa, and Kyle Corbett, who are also joined by Brad Smith and Jamie DeFalu in the garage area. So here we go again, ready to go back to green flag race. And one thing I'm noticing though, Jacob Lawler may be out of the race, but the two drivers trying to run him down for the points lead are not exactly running up at the front of the field. Levi McIntyre and Dylan Poteet, second and third in points. They are near the tail end of the lead lap. And so they really need to pick up some spots here in these last 10 laps if they're going to make up any ground on Lawler heading into next week at Lime Rock. Silver Fox got himself a good jump as he's done all day. Leo Walker there in second. Best battle is shaping up here for what could be the third position. William Duncan has it. Joshua Michaels trying to pick up maybe his third win of the season here in the truck series. He wants that third position. And Cody Lamas, he's been making some pretty daring moves, but he's kept himself up here in the top 10 all day. Nice run right now for the 39 machine as he's trying to get underneath of Zach Rogers. That would be for the fifth position. Dylan Young right behind him. He goes way wide in that corner, does Dylan. Oh, man, he's going to lose a lot of ground. Rubbing doors there between Austin the Plant and Trent Dunham. Again, another chaser battling hard there. 
Matter of fact, both of them are uh, season six champions. LaPlante won the Mobile Cup Series Championship, Dunham won the Truck Series Championship. So, interesting battling going on there. As here comes Deanna Shelton, big run into the corner there underneath of Danny Wells. Not quite able to make the pass that time. Nice run today for Chris Dollerton. Right now, he's the highest running of the non-chasers. He's he's a uh, 14th in points. And he's going to go three wide there with Matthew Daly and his teammate Dylan Young. Kicks him right up to the high side. And the caution's out again. Caution flag is going to wave one more time. And it looked like Leah Walker may have had some thoughts for battling for the lead here. But that's going to be turned away for at least the moment as Silver Fox will hang on. Boy, this is a horn's nest back here with Bob Jones, Galligan, Dollerton, Zach Rogers. But... They're going to keep it together as they come down here and receive the yellow flag. Looks like yet another spin on the front straightaway. And it looks like this time it was Jimmy Bly again. And Jackie Tang looks like he was collected in whatever this was as well. Jimmy Bly got turned around the very first lap on the back straightaway. Was able to get a caution to stay on the lead lap, but looks like he's not going to be able to make a bad day better. And Jackie Tang, who was running near the tail end of the field, on that last restart, apparently he was collected in whatever this was. When we hit the stripe, there'll be six laps to go. Let's look back at the replay of what put us out of the caution. We should be able to get back to green flag racing before this thing is over. And again, another incident near the tail end of the field. This has been the second straight time we've ended up having some spinner near the rear of the field. And this backpack has really been racing hard here the last few restarts. This time, it's going to be Andreas Allen going to be getting into Jackie Tang's left rear. Turns him down to the wall. Meanwhile, Zach Campbell kind of crowds Dylan Poteet. And Jimmy Bly gets into the back of him. That turns the 24 around right in front of the 31 and gives the 3 a lot of hood damage. And there you see Jimmy spinning down there into the infield grass. Jackie Tang, really, that didn't look like that hard a lick. Let's see just exactly how fast he was going when he hit that wall because he had to actually teleport his way to pit road. Well, he was going about 155. Oh, oh, wow, actually, that was a hard hit. I actually didn't see how hard a hit that was. That actually was quite some impact for the 98. Man. And there you see, Poteet was able to continue. Campbell was able to continue. Jimmy Bly spins and Jackie Tang spins, and yet another caution flag comes out. But again, doesn't look like really chasers were involved as much. I mean, Zach Campbell's a chaser, but he was running here near the tail of the field, didn't get a whole lot of damage, and Dylan Poteet, kind of the same for him. But we're under the caution once again. Let's see how many rap laps we're going to have to finish out today's event here at Homestead as James Silverfox continues to dominate today's event. Well, we have gotten word that we will go back to green flag racing with three laps remaining in this event. James Silverfox, he has turned back all comers. The main fact is he hasn't had any comers. Nobody has come to his inside battling him for this win or for the lead so far. If he can just get himself another good restart like he's done all day, Silverfox is going to be en route to his first Truck Series win of the season. Leia Walker lines up right behind him in second, though. This is the guy I think you got to watch out for, Joshua Michaels, up there in the hunt, and he's trying to look for his second straight victory in his third of the season as he's been on quite a momentum roll as of late. William Duncan lines up there in fourth, and Cody Lamas, he's been making some slicey and dicey moves today, but he's still up here now in the top five in fifth place. Zach Rogers right now in sixth, seventh Bob Jones, Galligan eighth, and then a couple of teammates in ninth and tenth, Chris Dollerton and Dylan Young. Still the highest running chaser right now is Austin LaPlante, as he'll restart from the 13th position. And here we go, getting ready to put him back under the green flag. If the caution comes out at any point during this three-lap segment, I think we can safely say the race will end under the yellow flag, which I don't think Silver Fox would mind, but let's see what's going to happen here. Green flag ready to come back out, and it is out. Silver Fox gets a good jump, but Leia Walker got a good jump too, and Leia's going to try and go to the inside. First challenge of the day here for Silver Fox. Leia Walker timed exactly the restart that James Silver Fox did as she's trying to go for the top position. Silver Fox battling as hard as he can that outside line. He's not going to be able to hang on to it. He's now going to be cleared maybe. Nope, not yet. He's coming back on that outside line here into three. Joshua Michaels all of a sudden up here in this mix. I told you watch out for that 43 car. As Leia Walker has cleared Silver Fox. 
That's the third leader we've had today. The first one was Kyle Thomas, second one was Silver Fox. Now, Leia Walker takes over the lead. Three wide for second as Silver Fox now begins to be freight trained. Cody Lamas goes for second. Now Michael slips back to third and Silver Fox will go back to fourth. One and a half laps to go. Leia Walker binding her time, picked her moment and made it work. Trying to pick up her first win of the season here in the truck series as Silver Fox trying to battle back hard tooth and nail. Caution flags out though. It won't matter here. Coming to the white flag and the caution flag. Leia Walker's gonna win this race here at Homestead Miami Speedway under yellow. Who got second? It was Michaels. Silver Fox was able to get third and fourth would be Cody Lamas. And what was this caution? Oh, you've gotta be kidding me. It was another chaser in Gene Sanford. Jake Rogers on pit road, Matthew Daly, Chris Washer, Jimmy Bly, and other chaser, and Zach Campbell is on pit road as well. Oh man, just when it was looking like the chasers were actually going to finish, this happens. Zach Campbell, 11th in points, Gene Sanford smoking heavily damaged on the front of her Duracell Menard Chevy Silverado. Comes in 7th in the championship points. And she will not be coming around to take the checkered flag. But Leia Walker will. What a move by Leia Walker there on the final restart of the day. It's going to pay off dividends. Leia Walker is going to come down and pick up her first win of the season in the Oreo Truck Series. She takes the checkered flag in the 4-200 at Homestead Miami Speedway. What a follow-up finish of second place after his win last week for Joshua Michaels. And what a heartbreak there for James Silver Fox. Dominated this race right up to the end, but that one restart, he could not jump far enough ahead of the Scott's Turf Miracle Grow Ford F-Series. And Leo Walker was able to capitalize and take the victory. Cody Lamas, great run for him in fourth place today. And Bob Jones, I don't think we really talked much about him. We only basically mentioned him when we got through the top 10. But what a great run for him here today in that 11 machine. A solid top 5 run for Bob Jones in the FedEx Toyota Tundra. But we have finished up this race. I don't think there's really much point of going back seeing what happened to bring out that final caution. It's not going to change the finishing results of this race by any stretch of the imagination. And we basically documented the drivers that were involved in it anyway. A couple of chasers, Zach Campbell and Gene Sanford. But as the race official or the race results are official, let's find out where our chasers finished today's event. And you gotta look a long ways back before you find Austin LaPlante. He was the highest finishing chaser of the day in 12th position. Right behind him, though, Deanna Shelton 13th and Tanner Sullivan 14th. So nice runs for both all three of those chasers. Well needed runs. Kyle Matthews after having damage on his machine. He battled back for 17th. So pretty solid run there for the 62. Levi McIntyre came in second in points. He finishes 22nd here today. We'll have to see where that puts him in relation to Jacob Lawler. We'll do that in just a moment. Dylan Poteet finishes just barely on the lead lap in 28th place. Gene Samper after that incident will finish officially in the 29th position. Zach Campbell finishes out of the race, I believe, in the 32nd place. And then these drivers left the race earlier on in this event. Jacob Lawler, the points leader, 36th. Kyle Thomas, 37th. Jake Cole, 38th. Isaac Kanepa in 40th. And Kyle Corbett in 41st. Now, Lawler finished this race in 36th. Levi McIntyre finished in 22nd. That's 14 points that McIntyre made up on Jacob Lawler. That means that still Jacob Lawler will have about a 16 point advantage heading into next week at Lime Rock. So that huge point advantage gave Jacob Lawler a little bit of room for error, which he did today, but he still will probably keep the points lead heading into next week's event. As a matter of fact, I'm almost wondering, Kyle Matthews may actually be the uh, driver second in points after this because he was only seven points behind Levi McIntyre, and, well, nope, there was only four positions separating them. So, nope, Levi McIntyre would still keep 
the second possession, I believe. Ma Matthews may end up passing Poteet for third in points, though. But regardless of where everybody's going to be, we do know Jacob Lawler will still have the points lead, but not nearly by the gap that he had coming into today's event. I hope you guys enjoyed this race. If you did, be sure to give this video a like, subscribe to become part of the crew today. Here comes your official full finishing results, overall point standings, rookie points, and your chase points heading into next week's event, which I have been saying for most of this race is going to be at Lime Rock. So I hope you'll be tuning in for that, and we will see you guys next time. Congratulations to Leo Walker on your first Truck Series win of the season, and you've been watching production of the SRA Offline Racing at its best.